Hello, my friends. Uh, you notice I normally upload at 11 a.m. In this case, the upload is much later. That is because YouTube has uh, done something really horrible to me. Uh, it took a very long time to upload the video. Uh, I decided to clean my computer. I thought that might be causing issues. And when I was cleaning my computer, I accidentally deleted the video that I was in the process of uploading. So whatever that issue with YouTube was, I don't know what it is. Uh, but I accidentally deleted the video while it was uploading. So I guess I have to go and redo this whole topic from the beginning again. Really, really frustrating. I hate when this happens. It happens occasionally with YouTube, but it's just really, really unpleasant to deal with that. So the video is about a Karluk individual from Kazakhstan. Uh, he lived 8 to 10 centuries after uh, the birth of Christ. So pretty much early medieval period. His Y DNA is J, uh, J, JZ7706. I think it should fall into the J2A subclade. And his mitochondrial lineage is A25. All right. So I guess first we're going to start with the ethnic calculator results. We're going to start with my own ethnicity calculator. Here he is closest to Karakaba Turks, uh, followed by Uyghur, followed by South Asian, Kazakh. So all, the, all of the Asiatic peoples. But he is closest to Karakaba Turks, and his closest model is actually a mixture of Sarmatian from the Urals plus Polynesian, or Kazakh plus South Asian. So with my trait predictor, you can actually see a little bit of a South Eurasian admixture, or like Australoid, or like Oceanian-like admixture in this in this sample, which is kind of kind of interesting. With GED matches Eurogenes K13, this is what he scores. He is not majority. Uh, he is not majority East Eurasian. He is roughly evenly split between East and West Eurasian. He is closest to Uzbeks, Afghan Turkmen, Hazaras, uh, Afghan Hazaras, Uyghurs, all the various Turkic groups. Uh, does he score a lot of Oceanian or uh, South South Eurasian-like admixture? Yeah, he does score 0.23% Oceanian, and he also is scoring 9% South Asian. So there is quite a lot of South uh, South Eurasian admixture in this individual. Uh, the closest mixture for him is Hakas plus Afghan Tajik or Afghan Tajik plus Altayan. <coughs> <coughs> so, relative to the Siberian Turkics, he is uh, definitely quite southern shifted. All right. Uh, let's see what he scores for Nashakot calculator and what he looks like. Uh, I'm going to make this video a lot shorter because it's just, I don't want to dwell on this for second time in a row. It's so frustrating. So it looks like he's got darkest brown eyes. I already knew this beforehand because I just made this video like two hours ago. It looks like he's got black hair. Uh, like he's got light brown skin. And it looks like he's got wavy hair texture. Uh, although curly and straight hair texture is also quite possible. The likelihood of kinky hair is pretty much nothing. So yeah, he most likely has wavy hair texture and black hair and black eyes and light brown skin. Uh, he doesn't have blue apple type 3 or 2 or 1. Uh, he does not have any ginger variants in MC1R. No predisposition to being ginger. All right. Uh, what about his polygenic risk scores? Let's go over that real quick. So he does not have any risk scores, any predispositions to anything, aside from his score for bipolar type 1, which is kind of high. Uh, but it doesn't matter because bipolar type 1 is a very rare condition. However, he has a high score for type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, because these conditions are very common. Type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's are extremely common conditions in modern humans. Uh, for multiple sclerosis, he has a very good risk score, definitely very healthy here. And he's quite healthy. I mean, there is nothing concerning in, out of all of this report. Uh, Parkinson's, Dreifenstein syndrome, Crohn's disease, GSS, celiac disease, I mean, and cancers. There is nothing concerning in this whole result. So I guess that's pretty cool. Let's see his uh, biomarkers result, biomarkers panel, hold on. So it looks like he's got a higher level of vitamin D, which is very good. Quite a healthy individual. He's got below average level of LDL cholesterol, very good once again. Uh, below average level of HDL cholesterol, which is kind of not so good, but it's okay because it's a very tiny deviation from the average. And below average level of glucose, which is once again really, really pog. Uh, he's got above average level of hemoglobin, but that doesn't really matter all that much. It's quite typical. And he's got higher blood pressure. Uh, the higher blood pressure is definitely very interesting. 
Uh, that combined with him scoring like two times the average odds of diabetes is definitely quite concerning. So he might he he might have a predisposition to being overweight, and uh, all of those problems tend to come together like that type two diabetes, blood pressure, uh, stroke. Uh, all these types of issues tend to come together. But aside from that, he's very healthy. Uh, for expected level of iron in the blood, looks like he's got very typical levels of iron. All right. We're going to go through these results real quick. I already know what's here. I don't really want to talk about any of this. Uh, he's a warrior in Comte, but he's a warrior in the MAOA. So overall, he's probably somewhere intermediate between warrior and warrior. Um, he does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. And OXTR and MPFG, and there is there is nothing much to there's not much to talk about here. He has some genotypes for increased empathy. He has some genotypes for decreased empathy. I mean, just natural variation here. Uh, for hemochromatosis, no risk variance for hemochromatosis. Really good to see. Uh, I don't really want to talk about any of this. No micropenis. <coughs> there's two variations that my trait predictor looks for for micropenis, and he does not have any risk variance for micropenis in either of them which is really good to see. Uh, all of this, I don't really want to talk about that stuff here. Uh, albinism in a typical traits panel. Oh, this is something I didn't notice at first. He's actually a carrier of cutaneous albinism type 2 mutation. That's very surprising. So is he a carrier for anything, anything else for albinism? No, he's not a carrier of anything else for albinism, but he actually is a carrier of cutaneous albinism type 2 mutation. Very surprising. Um, but I think to have albinism, you need to have two risk variants for that. So just being a carrier is not enough. You got to have two risk variants. You got to have, uh, if the risk variant here is T, then you got to have TT to actually be albino. Uh, because it's a recessive model. Uh, it, albinism, albinism is a recessive trait. It's not co-dominant. It's not partial, impartial dominance. No, it's recessive. Um, is there anything else here? Zero risk variance for holos, holoprencephaly. Yeah. By the way, in case you don't know what that is, um, that's that's really like nightmare, nightmare fuel. If you look that up, uh, it's horrible. <laughs> don't look it up. <laughs> but yeah, I added that recently to my trade predictor. Uh, okay. Uh, is there anything else I want to talk about here? Um, not colorblind. What about fat gene variant? He lo it looks like he's got he's got some fat gene variants in FTO. All right, so he does have a little bit of a predisposition to being overweight, uh, and his blood type is type A. All right, that, that's pretty much all I want to cover in this video. I'm just so frustrated. I have to redo this thing. I had to do this the second time, and the second time the charm is all gone. I don't want to talk about this stuff again. But that's pretty much this sample. Thanks for watching until the end. You can download. This file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.